Okay, so first up is the concrete footings. So first wood forms are placed, and then concrete is poured into these forms to create the footings. Steel rebar is running continuously throughout the footing, and it also comes out of the top to connect to the concrete wall above. And what a footing basically does is it takes the load of the entire house, and it spreads it out throughout the ground instead of concentrating it into one spot. Okay, so once the footings are dried and cured, the concrete walls will then be poured on top, and the same sort of system works with the concrete walls as well. So they'll put up all the formwork, and then they're going to pour the concrete walls inside of the formwork. And because of the rebar coming out of the footing, going into the wall, once the concrete and the wall dries, the concrete walls and the footings will be binded together. Okay, so after the walls are done, they'll pour a 4 inch slab on the ground. After the concrete slab is placed, then all of the structural steel work will be put in. Okay, so after the steel is in, something called the sill plate is fastened to the wall. And the sill plate is connected to the concrete wall by anchor bolts. You can actually see it in the section there. And the sill plate is usually two 2x6s stacked on top of each other. And the sill plate is actually made out of water resistant wood. And this keeps the wood from rotting since it's the closest to the ground. And the sill plate actually sits on top of the termite shield, which keeps out termites from the wood structure. The termite shield is usually a thin piece of galvanized steel or copper. And then it's all sealed together with a sill sealer. Okay, so after the sill plate is down, the floor joists are then laid out. So this is going to be the ground floor floor system. As you can see in this example, we have a piece of steel in the middle of the basement to cut off the span from wall to wall. And this is very common in many houses. The actual size of the floor joist depends on how far the joist is spanned. And there are many different ways that joists can be connected to beams. In this case, the joists are sitting on top of the steel. But in some cases, the joists are actually connected to the side of the beam to create a flush ceiling. Floor joists are typically laid out 16 inches on center, which means each joist is placed 16 inches apart from each other from the center of the joist. Okay, so once the floor joists are all laid out, they'll lay the subfloor right on top. And the subfloor is usually 3 quarters or 5 eighths plywood. And this is nailed directly into the floor joist. Next up is the sole plate. This goes around the entire perimeter of the house and it also goes under every partition. The sole plate is going to be the same size as the wall stud, so it could be a 2x6 or a 2x4 on the flat. Sole plate is basically the bottom piece of the wall. Walls are usually constructed on the ground and then hoisted up into place, so the sole plate, wall studs, and top plates will actually be put together on the ground and then will be stood up. The sole plate sits on top of the subfloor and then the wall studs sit on top of the sole plate. The top plate then caps off the ends of the wall studs and the top plate is usually two 2x6s or two 2x4s stacked on top of each other. And in this case, since the example is a one-story house, the ceiling joist and the roof rafters are going to sit on top of the top plate of the first floor. And I'm going to do a quick zoom in for you guys of a studded wall. Okay, so like we just went over, the sole plate is going to be on the bottom. The wall stud is the stud that spans from the sole plate to the top plate. And the window sill is the framing member piece at the bottom of the window rough opening. The king stud is the stud that spans from the sole plate to the top plate. And the jack stud is the stud that's actually holding up the header. That's the header. And that's the cripple stud. And that's the top plate. Okay, so after that, the ceiling joists will be put on. And the ceiling joists rest on top of the top plate. In this case, all the ceiling joists are resting on a bearing wall in the middle of the house. Sort of like the basement. And the size of these joists will be dependent on the span. And after that, the ridge will be placed at a specified height, and all of the roof rafters will be connected to this ridge. So the ridge is usually placed with temporary posts at the specified height, then the contractor will do the calculation for the roof pitch, because now the roof rafters have to fit exactly from the ridge to the top plate. And if the house has a gabled roof, the end walls of the attic will be framed with wall studs. So then the exterior sheathing will be put on, on all the exterior walls, and this is usually either plywood or weather resistant plywood. And all of the rough openings for the windows and the doors will be cut out at a later time. Okay, so next up is the roof sheathing, and this is going to be the same material. Then we have the fascia board, and this basically just caps off the, all the roof rafters. This is usually a 2x6 piece of wood. Okay, so those are all of the wood frame members that come together to make a house. Now we're going to look into how beams work and bearing walls. Okay, so by looking at this, you can see that all of the ceiling joists are resting on this bearing wall. 
and then this bearing wall is actually sitting on the steel below. This is making sure that all the load is transferring down into the footings. Okay, so if you ever watch any home makeover show or like HDTV, you'll notice that a lot of the times they'll take out a wall and then they'll put a beam in. And this basically means that the wall that they have to take out is a bearing wall. So to make sure that the ceiling joists don't fall down, you need to put a beam here. Because all of these ceiling joists right now are resting on this wall. And what this means is that the beam is going to now take the load of all the joists instead of the wall. And this allows for the room to be open without a wall in the middle. So this particular beam is called an upset beam. And this means that most of it is into the attic and it's flush with the ceiling. A dropped beam is when you actually see the beam in the room. And a lot of people don't like this because it breaks up the flow from room to room. So this is definitely the most popular. An upset beam will be more expensive than a drop beam though. So now this new beam will span the distance of the wall and it'll be held up by two posts at the exterior walls. Okay, so I hope this video helped you guys. I hope you learned a thing or two. I do have a book below that helped me learn about wood framing construction. If you guys are interested, the link is in my description. And uh, if you have any questions, leave a comment below, smash that like button, and subscribe if you want to see future content. Thanks for watching.